League is one of the hardest games in the world to truly master. There are two very broad categories of skill in League, micro and macro. Micro would be referring to your mechanical skill. This would be things like landing and dodging skill shots, or blocking, or pulling off certain combos. Basically, macro equals what you're doing with your hands. But that's stating it way too simply. Having good mechanics takes a lot of brain power too. For example, you need to know what every other champion does to actually build good mechanics, right? You can have pretty fast reaction times, but you still need to know the width and length of different things you'll be dodging. In teamfights, you're having to track all threats on the enemy team, knowing who you'll have to use flash and other mobility spells to avoid, when you'll need to use actives like QSS or Zhonya's and a ton of other things. At the end of the day, all of this is stuff you have to develop on your own time. You'll have to master your own champions as well as learn what every other champion does so you know how to play against them. There's no real shortcut to that. With a game as dynamic as League, experience is the best teacher. Macro is a bit more teachable, since it's more conceptual type of things like wave management, rotations, and other things like that. There's a bit more of a defined right and wrong here. But even with macro, experience comes into play. Again, we're playing a very dynamic game. There are some things in League that you should almost always do or avoid, but in certain scenarios, it may be better to make the choice that is usually wrong. So yeah, like I said, it's complex with a ton of learning to do. No single guide is going to be a one-stop shop to make you into a pro, but a good one can certainly give you a really good starting point to help reach your full potential. Like with anything else, if you try to build on a shaky foundation, you won't have a great end result. So that's what we'll be focusing on today. I'm Crumbs and today's video is our Season 13 Beginner's Guide to League. If you're not a new League player, don't let the title put you off. I'm sure there's something that everyone can learn from this, and it's never too late to back and relearn the basics. But before we get to the main course for today, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and their other content like this are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top-level players, and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your Pro Guides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, let's get to the topic at hand. Since this guide is aimed at all players rather than being role specific, we'll make this a list of tips rather than some structured how to play the game from start to finish type of video. So if you're trying to learn League from the ground up, the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out what you even want to play. There's no 100% surefire way to decide this without some trial and error. But first, you'll want to think about your playstyle and mentality for video games as a whole. If you're someone that plays off your emotions a bit, tilting one behind, but popping off with even a small lead, you probably want to have a bit of early game agency. If you only care about carrying later on in fights, you may want to find a more passive, consistent pick with an emphasis on scaling. Then there are the team players, the ones that like to pick utility to help their team win. There are solid options for this across all roles as well, but if you don't really have an idea, just start spamming games and trying to figure out what feels like it's the most fun to you. In the earlier days of League, different roles seemed a lot more hard set in what they did. Supports were pretty much purely about their utility with a super low income. Junglers were strong early champions that became secondary supports later on. Top laners had tanks and carries just like today, and mid and bot laners were almost always just hard carry champions. But as time has gone on, the lines have really blurred between the different roles and there are a ton of different champions in each one that fill all type of niches. For example, if you like playing supporty type champions but don't actually want to play the support role, you can play Seraphine as a bot lane carry. If you hate having a lane partner, you can even just take her mid. And don't be afraid to go against the grain. It seems like every season some new quirky strat pops up like the roaming top lane supports we saw earlier on this year. If you really like a champion but hate their main role, try them elsewhere and see if you can make it work. Now, as important as it is to find a champion or two that you feel really comfortable with maining, the next step is even more crucial for being a good player. You need to broaden your champion pool. Broadening doesn't just mean having more champions, you need to have more champions of different types. 
Let's say you find out that you really like assassins and want to become an assassin-only player in the mid lane. You strictly play Zed, Talon, and Katarina. What happens when the enemy team picks three super tanky targets and a carry like Zaya that can just nullify you jumping on her in fights? The answer is you probably end up not doing much. Imagine if you're in that situation, but you know how to play Cassiopeia. She has the kiting power and high DPS to deal with beefy targets. This is just one cherry-picked example, but the point is, regardless of the role you play, you should always try to mix up your pool at least a little bit. Have some solid options for both AD and AP when you're playing carries, and depending on your role, it's not a bad idea to have some tank or other utility options. Doing this isn't just about being able to synergize with your team. In fact, I'd say most of the time, it's a better idea to draft for yourself in solo queue. Too many people get baited into picking stuff to go with their teammates like locking Rakan because your AD carry is Zaya, or Malphite because your mid laner is Yasuo. That's just putting way too much faith in randoms that you don't know. So broadening your pool isn't just about fitting in with the rest of your teammates, it's more about giving yourself a wide variety of counters for different matchups. Obviously, take this point with a grain of salt. If you truly like being a team player, you do you. Just know that that means accepting that some games are out of your hands if your teammates aren't up to par. Okay, now that we have a general idea of how to find what to play, let's go over some basic in-game stuff. The first thing I want to do is dispel a really common misconception people seem to have about playing League. One of the most tired bits of advice is people saying, you should be playing for objectives, not kills. There's a bit of truth here. Objectives definitely are important and an epic monster kill is certainly worth more than a champion kill. But it's not like you can be playing for objectives all the time. Really, my advice is, unless you're playing an insanely strong early game champion, you should ignore objectives early on and focus on going for kills. The thing is, if you force a random objective fight early and the enemy team contests, you can basically lose off of that alone. You give up kills, a free dragon, laners end up behind, and the game pretty much derails from there. It's a much more effective way to play by just securing early leads via kills and a farm advantage so that you're stronger later on. You can then start forcing objectives and pulling ahead in that department in the mid game and snowball hard into the late game. The next step is something that a lot of players, even in high elo, need to learn to do. Use your wards. Vision is such an insanely broken tool that everyone has access to via trinkets, but so many people just sit on them and let them waste away. There are tons of videos out there going over all types of good spots to put wards down as well as some of the trickier placements, so we won't bother going over it in detail here. But in general, try to place wards where they are going to actually get good information. High traffic areas in the jungle, in the river, near one of the jungle exits, or in the bush furthest from your tower in top or bot lane are all great examples. So many bot laners immediately ward the closest bush when the enemy team is pushing up, but it's such a waste. As soon as the wave bounces back the other way, this ward becomes completely useless. Another thing you want to start doing is playing around power spikes. This can mean both levels and item breakpoints. Levels are especially important here. Leveling up gives a lot of stats, as well as making your abilities hit harder. The most obvious case of people abusing this is when they hit level 2, especially in the bot lane, where having two champions means you can usually burst down one target if you can land CC on them. The next is when people hit level 6. In most matchups, having your ultimate when your opponent does not means you can very easily force a fight that goes very heavily in your favor. But these two huge breakpoints aren't the only ones. Any time you get a level up, you should be looking to trade super aggressively. And like I said earlier, the other big factor is item spikes. If you're playing a champion that builds a lethality mythic and you just hit 6, it may be best to wait to go back for serrated dirk before blowing your ultimate on an all-in. You want to also keep your opponent's spikes in mind. If you know they have a more expensive first item than you, back as soon as you have yours and come back to lane with a huge advantage over them. Inversely, if your foe has the cheaper spike, do everything you can to keep them in lane longer to delay them getting it. The final tip we have for today is learning to be flexible with your builds. Poor runes and itemization has always been something that has bothered me in League. If you're just mindlessly doing the same cookie cutter build every single game, you're probably costing yourself some LP now and then. A good example of this was the preseason. So many people complained about how tanks were so unkillable, but really, it was just bad itemization. 
Don't get me wrong, a lot of tanks are definitely super broken right now, but back then, almost all of them were struggling. There's a reason Riot had to buff 7 of them on patch 1223. But obviously, people aren't going to be mowing down targets with 6k HP when they build Shield Bow into RFC or Gale Force with Collector. There are plenty of anti-tank items out there like Kraken Slayer and Blade of the Ruined King that absolutely shred beefier targets. This specific example is for AD carries, but again, this applies to all champion classes in all roles. Stop building the same thing every single game and actually think about what makes sense based on what you're playing against. And that wraps things up for our beginner's guide to Season 13 League. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope these basics help put you on the right track. Remember, if you want some more in-depth tutorials, you can always hit up our coaches over at ProGuides.com. And one last thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord, the link for that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you as a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift.